Hi, this is Ashley Victoria Robinson coming to you live from the Pop First, a virtual realm created by Pop. And this video is brought to you by popfirst.com, celebrating the best in TV, movies, and comics. And today, my friends, I am here to blow your mind. I am joined by award winning designer and creative director Tom Muller. Welcome to the Pop First. Hello, hello. Hi, Ashley. Thank you for having me. <laughs> we are so excited to have you here. I have so many questions, so let's dive right in. We'll start with an easy one. When I introduced let's you, go. I called you a <laughs> I called you a designer, which is your job <laughs> description. But for anybody watching who's not familiar with what that means, particularly in comic books, what does a designer do? Well, that's that. That's not really the easiest question to get started, but um, I'll give it. I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. Okay. Um, I think I think the best way to describe the role of a designer in comics is we are the the people that work primarily behind the scenes, and we help basically package the comics, the graphic novels, the books, everything that you kind of read, either physically or digitally. Um, and we create logos, trade dresses. So if you pick up any kind of comic book or graphic novel, the logos, all the copy, the packaging, the stuff that's on the back cover, on the spines, text, logos, colors, layouts, sometimes everything that's inside the books as well. So, you know, credit pages, chapter, ba chapter breaks, all that kind of stuff is what designers do. And we kind of work as part of a bigger team that obviously involves color artists, letterers, the artists themselves, the writers. And then you also have um, people that work in the production and, and that work in print production, print management, that basically make sure that everything that we do is actually workable and correct and is not going to fall apart when you are reading your comic. I just that you said fall apart and I just imagined like an issue tumbling apart in somebody's hands with the logo sliding off and all of the framing of the panels oh, yeah. falling away. <laughs> <laughs> what made you want to specialize? Could happen. It could happen. <laughs> what made you want to specialize in comic book design versus maybe graphic design or like corporate design? Well, I actually like comic book design is just a, a small part of what I actually do day to day. Mm -hmm. Um I've been I've been a professional designer for the best part of 20 years now and I've always worked across the spectrum of the design discipline I have I've worked a long long time in digital design as well and digital product design that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and I've always been I mean pretty much like everyone that works in comics grew up reading and loving comics and you kind of work towards a way to make comics part of your job and the stuff that you do day to day. And so um, over time, coming from the angle of digital design and web design, I started doing websites for comic book artists. And one of the first people I worked with years and years and years ago was Ashley Wood. And I started doing his websites. And then from his websites, I started doing a few logos for his books. And then that started to slowly snowball in getting work from other um, other artists. Like I even like years ago, I did the website for Kent Williams. I did a little bit of work for uh, Mark Millar. And so because the comic, in, the comic book industry is whether you 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 think think it or not it's very small mm. and you you kind of you know work word gets around and people see each other's work very often and so one piece of work led to another someone else meeting 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 other people and that's how i basically got stuck into um designing <laughs> more and more comics and kind of and, and working working with more and more creatives and, and writers and artists so you've already dropped some amazing names that you've been able to collaborate with. So I want to ask, what is some of the most fun design work that you've done for comic books? And what is some of the most challenging? Ooh, 
that kind of changes year on year because because <laughs> there's always like something something else that comes along um fair <laughs> recently i would say i would say like a lot of the work that i've been doing um with marvel on the x-men line has been both incredibly fun and also incredibly challenging because you're kind of you're a you're a small part of a much bigger kind of moving moving thing and so mm -hmm. you need to you need to you need to and i think that's kind of like that's the fun part as well of, <clears throat> of being a designer is that you have to kind of solve problems and 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 find interesting solutions to interesting problems and and kind of use your skills to help tell someone else's story or help sell someone else's story um Ooh. over the years i think i've i've had you know i've I, i'm happy with like you know a lot of the work that i've created um in in partnership with um people like ivan brandon and alish cott who i've had like long-standing creative relationships with and it's the kind of it's always the the, the push and pull between artistic freedom and making sure you kind of hit the target in in trying to grab as big as an audience as possible so you mentioned x-men and we're big fans of jonathan hickman here so i wanted to ask what is your working relationship with him like on a project like X-Men and is there ever any references that you have to balance to like past design work to inspire what you're doing to bring the franchise forward? Um, how do you mean in terms of past, past design work? Uh, well, because X-Men has had a lot of design elements, X-Men's had many, many iconic logos. Yes, so yes, yes. when you sit down to, and, and there's a lot more than just logo work that goes into this particular X-Men story, but when you're going yep, about to yep. build this, this new visual language for this new generation of X-Men readers, is it just you and Jonathan going in there and just creativity to the walls or are you going in with specific things you want to reference are there specific colors that you're lifting things like that right 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 gotcha um i think it it, it started out like very wide and, and and kind of open i think that's kind of the best way to approach these things when you when you yeah. get going it's like you don't try to be too narrow from the start you kind of filter filter things down um and basically when when um Jonathan reached out and we kind of started talking about uh, you know me joining joining the team and kind of working on the design side of things um the 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 first brief was literally we need a big x we need a new x like the, <laughs> the, the hero mark and and so it's it's like you know it's one of those those briefs that as a designer is at once amazing and also like really daunting because there's like <laughs> that big X can be anything you want. Um, and I think the main, the main thing that we had to keep in mind or that I had to keep in mind was that we needed to have a, a mark that was still recognizably X-Men. So mm -hmm. we all know, like, you know, when you think of the X-Men logo or the X-Men mark, it's an X in a circle. That was kind of one yeah. of the the main, one of the main things that you know, trying to find a way of connecting the new thing with the heritage of the brand and the heritage of the story. So it is kind of like for people to coming coming in, seeing the new the new design and the new brand, going like, oh, this is this is new. We get that this is completely different. But at the same time, it's like, oh yeah, we can see that it comes it comes from, you know, from nineteen is it sixty three? I think I, is it sixty three or sixty five? Somebody will tell us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> someone will be sitting in the comments going like excuse me um yes. but it's 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 basically it, it, it that was that was the one of the main problems to solve is like how can we be new and different without mm -hmm. losing the history of the of, of the brand and i think that was you know that was one of the things that we that we kind of worked towards and then once we had that established everything else kind of came came out of that kind of main main mark 
Did you design the typeface that you use in the X-Men logos? Yes, I did. So Jonathan Ooh. created because because sometimes <laughs> I see I see there's like there's there's sometimes like on 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 Twitter, um, you know, there's there's a, a a bit of a gray line sometimes. But like Jonathan Jonathan created the Krakoan alphabet, like he created the mm -hmm. Krakoan language, and so he designed um, that typeface that you see in 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 all the all the X titles, and then. When you know when the time came to basically design, I think it was the first six titles that came out of um, House of X and Powers of Ten. Um, I my approach was basically like, look, I can design six logos that are all kind of different, or we can design something and we can build something that really flows out of that hero X mark and create something so that all the logos look as part of one big family and they're immediately recognizable. So to kind of give me a shortcut, I spend a lot of time <laughs> up front kind of designing um, designing a, a, a custom typeface mm -hmm. so that I then have the tools to be a bit more efficient, you know, down the line every time. Um, Marvel needs a new a, a logo for a new a new series or a new book. It's a lot quicker to for me to just start like working and designing a new logo because I've already got like the 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 the, the foundation and the building blocks, and then I can start customizing to make sure that every logo still looks different and ownable versus it just looking cookie cutter like it's just typed out. Like just more Helvetica. <laughs> well, we use Helvetica as well, but that's a that's a different story. <laughs> is it is it easier for you to go into a process like that with a collaborator who says, "Here's the Krakoan alphabet. Start from there." Um, well, actually, like we didn't really start from the Krakoan alphabet because that was, oh. you know, that was that was that was, I think that was already there, and. Mm -hmm. I went away. I I created the the X the X logo mark. Then I started designing the, the 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 first few logos on based on like you know the the the, the custom typeface that I designed for the for the the family. But then we also had to look at the data pages, and so Jonathan had already kind of started, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, blocking out blocking out what those pages could be. And then Jonathan and I kind of went back and forth for a few weeks, just kind of hammering out different ideas, different options. And then he already was using the Krakoan alphabet and like, you know, some kind of, you know, Krakoan letters as kind of like elements on those pages. So he'd already done like quite a few things visually that then we started to connect like all the dots in those data pages to kind of come up with a system that would be flexible enough to kind of run over time and where other writers can start using that format to plug in content. And then we have the the, the design teams in-house at Marvel who can just like run with those master designs and that kind of look and feel to create the different the different pages that they need for each issue. Very cool. Okay, so we've talked a bit about Marvel, but I also think a lot of your work as being part 2000 AD. So I wanted to ask, is there a big difference that you notice working with a North American comic book publisher versus a European comic book publisher? Um, I'm not necessarily because you're basically still working for <laughs> different publishers, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think... I, I think both both these projects were kind of looking at modernizing a, 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 a kind of a, a piece of a piece of IP and, and 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 modernizing titles that have been with fandom for quite a while, and the challenge is always like you know how do you take that brand upwards mm -hmm. and make it exciting again for for people who've been 
along the ride for like decades and for people that might just come in now and that's the first time they're going to be um they're going to experience those stories and then you want to make sure that you kind of make a mark of sorts that kind of connects them then to go and explore what come what came before and then hopefully stay to to continue um you know continue the journey but with 2000 AD i mean it's it's a it's a different it's it's a different shape of publisher as well it's a mm -hmm. it's a smaller team it's a completely different kind of ip and and it's a it's a very different kind of stories that they tell and and the audience it's very interesting actually because 2000 AD obviously is a very british like cultural phenomenon yeah and it's for really sure in 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 like you know you can still find it here on newsstands if you go to news agents they'll have 2000 ad they'll have judge dread magazine they have all these things still wildly available and best of 2000 ad the the the, the, the new kind of graphic novel slash anthology series that i worked on is specifically aimed at the american comic book and book markets to kind of try and reintroduce these characters and these stories to a different audience so the whole exercise of developing the brand and the visual language for for that series of, of books is perhaps slightly different than working towards like a pure say english and 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 and, and british kind of audience interesting okay I want to know too, is there any design or designer that you take a lot of inspiration from when you're sitting down to do work? Um, yes and no. It's, um, it's, it's, it, it, it changes day to day. Like sometimes, <laughs> uh, I mean, I kind of, I've got like, I've got like a wall of, of, design books here on my right and it kind of reference books and hi design history books and obviously there's like a ton of stuff online but i kind of I, I kind of try to to make sure that i'm not too influenced in terms of like things that are super trendy because mm -hmm. super trendy stuff only lasts for like a couple of months a couple of years and then it's gone and I always try to to find ideas in things that have a bit of longevity and that can kind of like be really impactful, but they last. Since you mentioned you have some design and some reference books, are there any that you think are particularly good that people should check out if they're interested in design? Ooh, uh, a lot. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. Um, that's 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 going to be difficult. That's going to be difficult to to answer because again like one day i might like just take out a book on say let me see i'm i'm just kind of looking and thinking yeah, yeah, what yeah. could be what could be a good so i could i could take out a book on um the design of a swiss pharmaceutical company from the 60s and kind of look at the at, at That's packaging cool. <laughs> and 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 just kind of just kind of look at at that kind of design and thinking oh is there is there something that could spark an idea for something that i'm doing now or i could look at you know 80s and 90s video game logos and kind of think mm -hmm. like oh is there that that kind of keeps me going today and then tomorrow it's something else it's um could be a book i've got like a, a two volume book collection that has like that's kind of like an archive of every olympic games brand system from from the start so you kind of like then i'm I'm just kind of looking at that and going like oh yeah that could be maybe there's that then that keeps me going on on like a creative direction for i don't know a logo or or a brand or anything that i'm designing it's fascinating to hear that you're pulling from such a wide array, which of course makes total sense. But like, I would have never thought like oh, Swiss pharmaceutical yeah. companies. That's a really slick design. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think I think I mean I think that's that's 
that's always been my my main goal like especially in the the, the stuff that I do in comic books is mm -hmm. I I really try to avoid looking at other comics for inspiration because then everything yeah. just starts looking the same and I really like looking at anything from like architecture packaging design details on like furniture design anything really to just kind of oh yeah that's an interesting shape maybe I can use that as a basis to start designing a letter and then out of that letter comes like a whole word and then an alphabet for example so I really try to go as kind of off kilter as possible and then kind of layer in like you know the kind of the energy and the dynamics of like pop culture as a whole and then I think you get really cool and interesting results you're gonna have me sleuthing through everything you design from now on trying to be like is that <laughs> s part of a chair is that x a railway yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is the thing is that on on that note one of the years and years and years ago when I when I was a teenager there was a and I think it's been it's been translated and published in 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 English um I can't remember what publisher I think I know Titan Books did uh did, did a translated edition in the UK and I think it might have gotten to the US as well but um there was a graphic novel adaptation of the um the Forever War that uh mm -hmm. sci-fi um novel by Joe Holdman and the artist was a, a a belgian a belgian cartoonist who used to be an architect and he kind of you know ventured into into comics and 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 created that was basically his first main comic book project and they had him on the news in the local news in belgium kind of talking about the work because the book was a big success and and like you know made some waves internationally and they kind of showed his creative process and he was kind of taking electrical plugs and like fuse boxes and he went like oh yeah and then this kind of shape this that became that spaceship and then my 15 year old brain went like oh that's cool that's how you can get you know that's how you do that's where ideas can come from and so that's something that i always try to in some way look look for in in my own work I also think for a North American audience, we don't give enough credit to Belge comics. Uh, the first comics I ever mm. read were Belgique. So <laughs> I'm so glad yeah. that we got around to talking about very it. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Which one? And I have to, uh, Tente, of course. Oh, yes, of course. That's required Demi reading. Demi de ma famille est français, donc oui, what? It's all Tente. <laughs> cool. Um, See, I'm I'm from I'm from the Flemish part in Belgium, and I've been, oh. I haven't really spoken French. I haven't really spoken French in years and years and years. So it's I don't want to I don't want to harm the pop first audience with my with my broken <laughs> French. That's okay. <laughs> you and I were opposite sides of the same coin, so together we can read all of the street signs. <laughs> exactly. So because I have you, I have to ask, what do you think of the Popverse logo? I think it's really, I think it's really cool. I think actually I spoke, I, um, I chatted with Chris about it because um, he mentioned like basically the, 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 um, the, the person that designed the Popverse branding is someone that Shout I used to, to work Carl with. Carl Cox. <laughs> yes. So, Carl and I used to work at the same agency like years and years and years ago. So mm -hmm. there's 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 a connection there. But I mean, it's and I don't I don't want to just say this because we're talking and it's it's yeah. for a pop first thing. But I think like you can tell you can you can tell the the kind of the 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 care that's been taken to create the pop first branding versus all the other comic book news outlets i think it's really important to kind of spend time and money on on those things to really create something that's that's impactful and that can last and that can stand out instead of just kind of going with something that isn't as unique let's say 
Well, I thank you for your kind words, but I also thank you for your honesty because above all else here, we want people to be honest. You've already blown my mind wide open, but there might be some people watching who want to make their own comics or want to get into design elements. And you've referenced a lot of really mm -hmm. great things, but what's your best advice for people who want to break into design? Break into design in general or break into design for comics? Ooh, is there a different answer? I, uh, I, <laughs> hmm, maybe. Um, I think, well, see, the thing is, I went to, I studied design in college. I did like mm -hmm. the whole thing um, to get a degree and then started working and everything. But I know so many, so many of my, my, my peers and old colleagues and, and people that I've worked with who never went through a traditional design education and kind of came in from different angles, different backgrounds, or just, you know, after high school when I'm going to, I'm going to become a designer and I'm just going to learn because I think that's something cool. And I think, I mean, as with any kind of creative discipline, I think it's, you need to learn you need to kind of take the time to educate yourself if you don't do it in school if you don't have that kind of avenue i think there's loads of ways of of studying design on your own read books watch i think i think learn about the history of design before you kind of get stuck into something too specific i think if you know enough of the history you can start to apply those rules and and learn from the past basically instead of trying to like just focus on what's cool now because I, I think there's i can see a lot of young designers just kind of humping hopping on to something that's oh this is cool now we all need to do this and then like two years later they're kind of lost because that thing has gone out of style it's something else but i think if you learn the basics and you've spent some time like and and especially I'm I'm talking about like my peers who I learned a lot from mm -hmm. who didn't have like the quote unquote traditional kind of college design education. I learned as much from them as I did from my 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 professors in school because they really, you know, spent the time and 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 the, the made the efforts to really learn history and typography and everything else. And then, you know, you, you become, you become great at what you, what you want to do. It's learning and hard work. Yeah. <laughs> hard work. Always. <laughs> there goes. The <laughs> There's the mic. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Tom, we've almost come to the end, but because here in the pop verse, we celebrate the best in TV, movies, and comics, I have to ask, what are you geeking out about right now that you're not working on? Ooh, um, uh, what, there was something, uh, I haven't really, I kind of, caught up with a lot of the stuff that I still need to finish severance on Apple Ooh, TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's, good one. That, that's amazing. Both, both it's, that's kind of like the whole package design story performance. The whole thing is, is, is amazing. Um, I'm what else am I geeking out about? Uh, just to kind of like, a lot of the things that came out of of um, San Diego Comic Con, like I'm still as nerdish as everyone else. So when I see um, a slate of movie announcements and TV announcements, I'm like, "Ooh, this looks cool. This is gonna, this is gonna take, <laughs> this is gonna take care of my um, all my my geekish needs." But yeah, I'm 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 kind of excited about a lot of stuff. But then. I don't really have a lot of time to like enjoy everything yeah. as much as I. <laughs> it's not I your free time. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, what what free time? What is that? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think finishing finishing Severance um, is high on my list, um, 
And there's that new, I think it's out today or this week, um, that ILM documentary on series yes. on, on Disney Plus, I think. So that's something that's something I definitely want to watch. Like anything that's kind of about like creativity and making stuff and designing stuff, I'll be, yeah, I'm up for that. Tom, thank you so That's much it. for joining us. Where can people find you? Where can they support you? Where can they follow you online? Where can they send you their hot takes on your design work? <laughs> Ooh, um, <laughs> I'm on pretty much every social platform. Um, just Google Hello Miller and you'll find me. You'll find somewhere, you'll find me on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, um, on my website. Um, yeah, Hello Miller everywhere, basically. That's the, that's the goal. Thank you again, Tom. And thank you everybody for joining us today. I have been Ashley Victoria Robinson from The Pop First. Don't forget to visit thepopfirst.com where we're celebrating the best in TV, movies, and comics. And get yourself a membership while you're over there so you can see all of the amazing exclusive content that we are making all the time. Thank you so much again, Tom. Thank you.